I think my major concerns around financial crime are the fact there are three or four different key aspects. The first is that it's moving at pace and it's really important upon uh, industry to kind of catch up with that and at times industry can move too slowly sometimes for very good reason around regulation, compliance and making sure that good due diligence is done. But it's important to know that the fraudsters don't operate under that guise. They operate with pace um, and it's important that we can get around together to do that. There are some other factors that I think are probably evolving over the next few years as well. The first is around hijacking of identities. We're seeing a lot of that happening through social media channels, through uh, instant text messages. For example, a, a parent might receive a, a text saying, hi mum, I need you to, to text me um, and send me some details, some financial details. We're seeing a lot of that where people are hijacking identities in order to gain a financial benefit. And that also ties into the fact that actually a lot of this work is being done by the financial sector, but a lot more, as has been said by many others, needs to be done by telecoms and social media channels because a lot more of people now are, are being influenced by what they see on Facebook or TikTok or any other social media channel as well. The other interesting part, point as well is that because the fraudsters are really you know, using new techniques and methods to do it, is keeping aware of, fraud, of fraudulent verification, I call it. And that's where you use perhaps two different mediums to uh, verify yourself. So if you were to get a random scam call, you might have the, 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 the house to sort of say, oh, that's probably fine. But if you've got a secondary email as well to back that up, most people get duped into thinking that that actually then is, is a verifiable email because you've had two forms of medium connection there. And then the fourth sort of aspect I would look at is probably around how holiday scams and romance scams um, evidence the fact that fraudsters are here to play the long game. They will assess the risk and reward and they are prepared to sit and wait especially if they've got multiple romance scams happening at one time. And there are other ways that I think fraud will begin to evolve as well. Um, and the way that we need to think about it needs to change. We need to start moving away from talking about collaboration to actually doing it. The industry likes to ensure that actually a lot of compliance and regulation is met. But again, back to the earlier point, um, a lot of the fraudsters aren't concerned with that. They're moving at pace. So we need to stop circling around the same sort of issues, knock them on the head and move on and deal with it. Things around data sharing and things around you know, data protection as well. Sometimes we will need to make tough decisions, make them quickly, uh, particularly when it's, it's regarding whether it's a data sharing issue or whether it's a fraud issue. The other thing I think the industry will need to start doing is working far more in a cross-discipline kind of way. At the moment, the way that most organisations are, are built, they are built in silos. So if you think typically about a payments business, it is a siloed business. But the reality is that we all bring different skill sets to the game here in terms of data sharing, from economic crime specialists to payment specialists to data uh, sharing protection um, specialists to um, data standards people. The reality is that that's already happening in other areas of industry. So if you take science, for example, there are already laser physicists working with microbiologists to augment um, you know, cell structures. So there you've got already got evidence of uh, different firms and different um, industries doing cross-discipline. And the third aspect I think I probably would call out as well that we need to focus on is around not thinking about it solely being a payments issue. This is about a nefarious actor issue. So it could be identity fraud, it could be trying to get commercial information, it could be trying to siphon money, it could just be to provide uh, disruption to the industry. The point is that seeing it as a payment and a diverting of funds issue solely is probably not the way to go in on. I think the biggest opportunities coming up are the opportunities to work cross-discipline. Um, as I mentioned before, you've kind of got people with different backgrounds, but all striving to get to the same outcome. So you've got data analysts working with identity specialists, working with broader financial crime regulators, um, working with standards people, working with social media marketeers. They're all trying to get to the same outcome, and that is to reduce fraud. Different types of fraud, but ultimately to reduce fraud. And that can be identity fraud, payments fraud, whatever. The point is to stop people doing nefarious activities. And I think the opportunity to, do, to work cross-discipline and thinking outside of the conventional payments box, I think will bring those different experiences and expertise together.